بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم اگین ود یو ود دا سیم ٹاپک اسٹاپنگ وائی ورڈس آن آ اسنوئی ایوننگ ان دا لاسٹ لیکچر آئی ہیو گیون یو دا کمپلیٹ کانسیپٹس آف آل دا گرامیٹیکل کانسیپٹ گرامیٹیکل کانٹینٹس دیٹ آر ڈسکسڈ ان دس یونٹ ناؤ ان دس لیکچر آئی ول گیو یو دا کمپلیٹ ڈسکرپشن آف ایچ اینڈ ایوری اسٹینزا آف دا پوئم I will discuss the first stanza, second, third and fourth stanza in front of you and I will describe a short summary in front of you. But I will give you a complete detailed summary by st stanza by stanza summary in front of you on the screen and I will give you the complete poem summary also here in this lecture. And I will give you the complete description of all the important words from this poem over here in this lecture. Okay students, now I am coming towards first stanza of the poem. In the first stanza of the poem, the poet is uh, uh, going to create a situation for the man. He says that uh, when a man is going to be in relation with the nature, sometimes the situations are very worse and uh, it, the worst situation creates a conflict inside a man. How this conflict has been created in these lines? In these lines, the conflict is created by two sentences, by asking two questions in this sentence stanza. The speaker is going to stay uh, in the words where there is ice everywhere and he wants to be over here for a time, for a while, so that uh, the weather will be better and he will go on towards his journey. But here the situation is created, the conflict is created by asking the question ke, whose words are these, maybe uh, uh, he is going to, um, whose words are these, such type of questions are uh, showing that a conflict has been created inside the mind of the speaker that how he and this conflict shows that the next reaction of the person that how he will survive inside the woods in this intense weather. I have given you the technique of reference and context in the first uh, in the previous lecture which is regarding the poem Daffodils. I have told you how you have to write the context and how you have to write the reference. In the reference you have to describe the Uh, poet and you have to tell about the lines of the poem that from which poem these lines have been extracted out. Now I am coming towards the, the context of the poem. When you are going to write the context of the poem, you have to discuss the situation which is before this stanza in two to three lines. In next two lines, you have to tell the complete summary of the poem. Uh, uh, context should not be more than three to four lines. Now I am coming towards the uh, explanation. And I have given you the explanation of first stanza over here on the screen. You can use this explanation also and you can change these words by adding your own vocabulary to make it more impressive also. Now I am coming towards the explanation. Stopping by woods on a snowy evening is a seemingly simple tribute to the beauty of nature, but Frost has made it dramatic by suggesting conflicting emotions in the speaker. He wants to stop to watch his words fill up with snow, yet he seems a bit worried about being seen doing this, especially by being seen by the owner of the woods whose house is in the village. Why should he be concerned about being seen by the owner or anybody else? This question raised in the first stanza lends a dramatic feeling to the entire poem. What does the speaker have in mind? What does he want? Okay students, now I am coming towards the second stanza of the poem. What the poet is going to say to us in the second stanza. In the second stanza, the speaker is calling his horse. The horse is uh, hungry and the situation is very intense at that time. Now the question arises that what is the purpose of the speaker to go inside such type of woods where the condition is so worse and there is nothing to eat and nothing to survive over here. 
so in such a condition some critics say that the speaker wants to die over here so he has decided to go at such a place where there is nothing to eat nothing to drink and nothing to survive so that he can die easily and can lie down over there in the snow this perception may be true or not but these lines are going to predict such type of conflict so that we have to assume what type of situation the writer is going to create in this stanza now i am coming towards the explanation of this stanza reference and context may be will be same as i have given you earlier now the explanation of the second stanza is over here in front of you you can see the explanation from here in the second stanza the speaker calls attention to his horse this little animal is cold and probably hungry it wants to finish this trip and go get out of the dark snowy night even the horse wanders why the speaker should be stopping here in the middle of nowhere on a snowy evening many critics have suggested that the speaker has a death wish that he is thinking it would be easy to end all his problems by walking into the woods so lovely dark and deep and lie down in the snow freezing to death is supposed to be an easy way of dying frost however denied that there was any death wish in his poem evidently he was concerned concerned with making it dramatic imagine the same poem without the owner without the little horse shaking its harness bells and without the words the words are lovely dark and deep which suggests that the mysterious trees seem to be pulling the speaker into them and offering him a pleasant death okay now i am coming towards the third stanza yes students what the writer what the poet is going to say in the third stanza in the third stanza the writer has beautifully created an auditory has beautifully used an auditory imagery in these lines that the harness of the bell of the horse is creating an effect that is emerging the internal feeling of the speaker to go towards his town that there is a sign of life in the harness of the bell that the harness of the bell that the sound of the bell that is around the neck of the horse is going to appeal the feeling of the poet to go home and it it, it is also going to uh, tell the poet that if he is going to die in in, in such uh, in uh, these words that uh, the horse will do after him these lines are going to tell us that life is not simple as we are thinking it life is not as uh, smooth as we are planning about it the final plan is from the god and we have to wait for it so there is uh, another conflict in these lines which will uh, which is going to compel the reader that he has to go towards the next passage to clear out that uh, conflict now i'm coming towards the explanation of these lines the explanation is over here on the screen in the third stanza when the horse gave his harness bells a shake the sound seems to be to pull the speaker out of his trance like state his horse reminds him that they should get going evidently the speaker has been to town on some errand and is on his way back home if he was indeed thinking of committing suicide he couldn't leave his patient faithful little horse standing there in the falling snow if the horse didn't freeze to death it might go on to the nearest farmhouse in which case the people there would be sure that there had been a serious accident and would follow the road back to where the horse and sleigh had been standing in the last stanza now i am coming towards the last stanza of the poem in the last stanza the poet is going to give us a message through the feelings of the read through the feelings of the speaker he is going to realize the feelings the responsibilities inside the speaker that escaping from life is not the end of life he has to face all the challenges that god gives him that that god has created for him and he has to 
prove that he is a man and this solitude and this escape from life maybe he wants to go he was over there for suicide or maybe he was over there for solitude and he wants to enjoy the nature but in both the conditions he should know that he has the responsibility of a family who is waiting for him so here the poet is going to arouse the feeling of being in relation with the world the escape from life is not the end of the life we have to face the challenges of life bravely and we should not try to commit such type of acts which can be harmful and which can be neglected in the lives of others now i am coming towards the explanation of this stanza the explanation of this stanza is over here on the screen in these lines the speaker is reminded that he has obligations and responsibilities as i have told you he has been far away in his solitary thoughts and now is returning to reality this is the return from imagination to reality in these lines either he can, cannot just sit there looking at a beautiful scene or else he cannot commit suicide on the spur of the moment he has food for his family and probably christmas presents in the sleep he regrets having to continue on his journey but he has a long way to travel in his slow moving horse drawn wheel before he gets home the repetition of the line and miles to go before i sleep seems to suggest that he is also thinking that he has a long life ahead of him with many problems to deal with before he finally goes to sleep for ever now i am coming towards the main important words with their grammatical description from the poem here the point is to be noted that i have not given you the important words stanza by stanza because there are not too much words which are important from these lines so i have combined all the words in a collected form in a single chart over here on the screen you can take help from these words with their complete grammatical description to meet the requirement of your objective okay students the first word is woods it's a noun its synonym is forest i saw some flowers in the woods and went to look at them queer it's an adjective odd and abnormal are its synonyms balanced is its antonym they wore blue uniform and queer little caps harness it's a noun belt or strap is its synonym you may know the horse by his harness sweep it's a noun span or stretch is its synonym limitation is its antonym i dust and sweep but a stern lady looks after the madam whose care is beyond my responsibilities downy adjective fluffy is its synonym and hairless is its antonym the princess said nothing but suddenly her short downy lip quivered flake it's a noun scale and leaf are its synonyms whole are is its antonym flakes of falling snow were fluttering in that light yes students these are the main and important words from all the stanzas of the poem stopping by woods on a snowy evening now i am coming towards a complete summary of this poem the summary is over here in front of you on the screen you can take help from this summary to write out the complete summary and you can take help from the stanza by stanza explanation to make it more compelling for the examiner now i am coming towards the block questions of this poem the block questions uh, are over here on the screen and i am going to explain these questions in front of you the first block question is what hidden meanings do the following words convey to us words house horse harness bell downy flake i have given you the complete description of all these words in my previous lecture where i have explained the uh visual imagery and auditory imagery and these words are going to explain such type of feelings over here again now i am coming towards the next block question note the alliteration and imagery in the poem yes students i have given you the complete use of imagery and the complete use of alliteration stanza by stanza in my previous lecture you can take help from that lecture to complete out these two block questions and the other questions also 
Okay, students, inshallah ta'ala, we will meet as soon as possible with my next lecture related to this chapter in which we will discuss the complete exercise of the stopping by woods on a snowy evening, inshallah ta'ala, as soon as possible. Uh, till then, you have to wait for me. Allah Hafiz.